Welcome back for lecture 11. So as I promised in the last video, we are now going to be going over derivative rules. So no longer are we going to have to use the definition of the derivative to do all of our derivatives. Um, and we're going to start with our very first rule. So this one's going to be called the power rule. So here we have the derivative of power functions. All right, and this is our very first rule, so I'll put a star next to this one. Um, over time, we're going to build up many, many different rules. Um, these are, should all just be committed to memory to really speed up the process for finding derivatives. So d dx, so remember from the last video, this meant this is um, an operator. You're going to take the derivative of what's in here. So the derivative of a power function, so x to the n is a power function, is equal to n times, so you bring the n in front, x, and then you'll subtract 1 from the power, provided n is not equal to 0. Um, so this is some real number n. So this is our power rule. This is much easier <laughs> of a process than writing out the formal definition of the derivative uh, using the limit and then simplifying. So the key takeaway from this is we don't need to use the definition. And I'm sure a lot of you are very relieved that we don't have to use that definition anymore to find derivatives. So this video is going to be um, nice and succinct, and I'm just going to go through um, examples um, of, of different derivatives, just to re refresh your memory um, on how to do this. So my first example is let's take the derivative of x to the fifth. So following our rule, all you need to do is take the power, 5, bring it in front, and then you're going to subtract 1 from the power. So it becomes 4. So 5 minus 1 is just going to be 5x to the 4. And that's the derivative. That is the answer you would get if you use that long definition of the derivative, simplified everything, plugged in h equals 0. You would get this. This is much quicker, <laughs> wouldn't you say? Uh, the next one is I'm going to say f of x is the square root of x. So typically, when you're dealing with um, some kind of radical function, you should convert it into its power, like its rational power. So a square root function is x to the 1 half power, and then that's the n we're going to use. So on a new line, I'm going to say the derivative of this function right here is I bring the 1 half in front, bring the power in front, x, and I need to subtract 1 from the power. What is 1 half minus 1? It's going to be negative 1 half. And if you wanted to write your answer in a different form, you would say this is 1 over 2. To take care of this negative power, you're going to move this to the denominator. So it's going to be x to the positive 1 half. And that's just 1 over 2 root x. So I was correct all the way over here. This is just me writing it in a bunch of different ways, just so you can remember all the different ways you can write your answer. Where would the derivative not exist here? Here's a lecture 10 question. The derivative would not exist at x equals 0. So just reminding you of that. Here are some useful properties that we will use for the rest of the semester. So if you have f plus g of x, so I'm going to say f and g are differentiable functions. So if you have f plus or minus g, and you want to take the derivative of those two functions, um, f plus g or f minus g, then that's the same thing as just taking the derivative of f and then adding the derivative of g. So uh, loosely, you can think of it as the derivative will distribute over a plus or a minus symbol. That's all you need to think about. This one is if I have a constant times a function, so I guess over here I'll also add c is a constant. So c times f, the derivative of that, is equal to the constant times the derivative of f um, for any c constant. So you can interpret this as, instead of taking the derivative of a constant times a function, 
you could just bring it out front first and then just do the derivative of the function itself. So constants factor out. And then third, um, I'll write it like this. The derivative of c, the derivative of a constant, is just 0. And why is that? If I have the equation y equals c, let's say c is some positive constant. What's the equation y equals c? What does it look like? It's a horizontal line at c. And what's the slope of it? The slope is 0 um, for, a, for a horizontal line. So the derivative of any constant is just 0. OK, let's do another example. So this example is f of x equals 7x squared minus 2 minus 3 over x squared. Because of our first rule, we can just separate this, the three terms here um, by doing the derivative of each piece separately. So that's what the first rule allows us to do. So this derivative is the derivative of 7x squared. So I'll bring the 2 in front. Um, and it is going to be 2 times 7 x to the 1, because you decrease the power. The derivative of a constant here is going to be 0. So I don't need that. I'll just put 0. This right here, so this term, you could think of this as 3. And then what power of x would that be? It'd be x to the negative 2. So if I bring a negative 2 in front of negative 3, I'm going to get positive 6. And then if I subtract 1 from the power, I'm going to get minus 3. OK, I'll clean this up a little bit. 2 times 7 is 14x plus 6. And I'm going to do over x to the third. I'm going to bring this negative back down here. So this is the derivative of that problem. OK, so let's do another example. How about we're going to take the derivative of the fourth root of x minus 5x to the seventh plus 7 plus 3x. I encourage you to try it um, if you want to just pause the video, take a second, and then unpause. This will go ahead and convert. So the um, fourth root of x is just x to the fourth. And the rest of them, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So I'm just going to leave it like that. If I bring the 1 fourth in front, I'm going to get 1 fourth. If you subtract 1 from the power, you get negative 3 fourths. Here, we're going to bring the 7 in front. 7 times 5 is 35. The new power is 6, because I decreased the power 1. A constant, derivative of a constant is just 0. And the derivative of this, if I have x to the first power, you'll bring the 1 in front. 1 times 3 is 3. The power decreases to a 0. And x to the 0 is just 1. OK? And then this is your answer right here. This time, I won't even bother converting this back to a radical. I'm just going to leave it like this. Let's try one more example, OK? So we're going to let y equal 5x squared over x to the fifth minus 17 root x. If you can simplify, do that before taking the derivative. It makes your life easier. So if you can simplify an expression before you even begin, let's do that. So I'm not going to take a derivative. I'm just going to make y look even better. So x squared over x5, two of them cancel, and I get 5 over x3. The square root of x, I don't like it written like that. So I'm going to write it as x to the 1 half. y is equal to? 5x to the negative 3, bringing this up, minus 17x to the 1 half. I think now I'm ready to take the derivative. So let's go down here. Now I'll write y prime, and we'll take the derivative of this, because this is the transformed version of this one. Bring the negative 3 in front. I get negative 15x to the negative 4. So if you subtract 1 from negative 3, it becomes a larger negative. It's negative 4. Here I bring 1 half in front. I get minus 17 over 2. Subtract 1 from 1 half, and you get negative 1 half. All right, so there was the power rule, and we did a couple of the properties of the derivative. There are going to be many more 
rules and properties to come. So I'll see you in just a moment for uh, your second rule for the semester. Welcome back. So let's go ahead and talk about what our second derivative rule is. So we're going to let a be a positive real number. And let's define f of x to be the exponential function a to the x. Then here's our next rule. The derivative of a to the x is equal to itself, a to the x, times ln of a. And this ln, if you recall, is the one that has base e. So this is our special log that has base e. So here's the rule. Um, it's not so bad to remember because you just copy exactly what it is here. And then you take ln of the base. Um, so with any of these rules, it's good to do practice. So now I'm just going to do some practice problems with you using this rule and also incorporating some of the other stuff that we just did earlier. So here's our first example. The derivative of 2 to the x. So this time, our a is 2. Let's follow the formula. This is like a recipe, basically. We have to follow what the recipe says. You take whatever it is here and repeat it. So 2 to the x, the derivative is going to be 2 to the x, ln of, and this time the base is 2. So I'll fill in 2 here. And that's my derivative. Let's look at a slightly more interesting example. The derivative of e to the x equals, this time um, e is a positive constant. So this, is, this stands for our a here. This is e. Um, I'm going to repeat e to the x, because that's what our recipe here says. Then I'm going to take ln of the base e. However, what is ln base e of e? That cancels out, and we get e to the x. This is very important. I would even almost consider this the third rule, even though it's a special case of this one. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It's going to come up all the time this semester and in future calculus classes that you ever take. So um, write that down. Star it a billion times. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Here's another example. So here I'm going to let a be greater than 0. Let's define y to be e to the a x. So the power is a times x. So then we can rewrite. I think I'll do it right here, actually. So give me just a moment. I'll just erase this. We can rewrite this as e to the a to the x. Because as you recall from algebra, a power to a power, you multiply these together. And that's what this is. So you can think of this as my new base. I have e to the a to the x now. So let's go ahead and use our rule. So y prime is equal to, I'm going to repeat this. That's what the rule says, repeat it. So I have e to the a to the x times, and then I have ln of, and I have ln of the base. So that's e to the a. So let's try to simplify this a little bit. So e to the a to the x, I said that was e to the ax. So I'm just putting it back to how it was. ln of e cancels, and I have a. So the answer to this is a times e to the a to the x. So what happened here, if you think about it in general, is you take the derivative of e where you have a constant in front. The answer is just you take this constant, and you put it in front and you copy it. So let me write down that. So in general, what we just discovered is that the derivative of e to the a to the x is just a e to the a to the x. OK? All right. Let's move on from there. How about we look at an application? So my example here is we're going to find the equation of the tangent line 
to y equals 3x squared minus e to the x at x equals 0. OK, so to find the equation of a tangent line, I need a point and I need a slope. The slope is your derivative. So when you're doing the equation of the tangent line, derivative is necessary. So the slope is going to equal y prime, which is going to equal. We need to take the derivative of this difference here. So we use our property, and we just do the derivative of each piece separately. This was the power function we saw earlier. So bring the 2 down. 2 times 3 is 6. The new power is 1 when you subtract. That takes care of this piece. Now I can move to the next one. The derivative of e to the x, that's our rule right there. It is e to the x. So this is our derivative. Let's do the slope at x equals 0, because that's the point we're interested in on the graph. So let's plug in 0 to get the slope for the derivative here. So y prime equals 6 times 0 minus e to the 0. This is 0 minus anything to the 0 pow power besides 0 is 1. So this is minus 1. All right, so this is our m. So we now have a slope. We have an x-coordinate. Where are we going to go to get our y-coordinate? We need it to be on the original graph. So let's take 0 and plug it in the only place we haven't plugged it in, which is the beginning. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 minus 1. So I get minus 1 here as well. So then the equation of the line, if I want to use point-slope form, so let's say point-slope form, our tangent line equation is going to be y minus y1, so y1 is negative 1, equals m, which is negative 1, x minus x1 is 0. If I just make this look a little nicer, it's y plus 1 equals negative x, aka um, y equals negative x minus 1. All right, so that's the equation of the tangent line to this curve right here. All right, we have covered the first two rules so far, power and exponential. Next time we'll do the product rule and quotient rule, and we're just going to keep building from there for this, this whole um, next exam period. We're going to learn all of these different rules. Uh, make sure you look at your lecture quiz 11. Uh, you should be prepared for that. Um, if this video is too short for you, um, after, uh, under this video and every other video, I have the fall 2021 lectures um, posted as well in a separate link down there. So if you want even more lecture videos, um, you can go watch those as well. Okay? Um, until next time, see ya.